All right, tapping in, y'all tapping in. About to walk out the door. The time is 7.03. <clears throat> I usually try to leave out the house by 7.15. Um, as y'all know, I'm in Philly. Um, I actually work over the bridge in Jersey, so it's about a good 20, 25 minute ride, depending on traffic. But um, yeah, bro, I'm gonna just share this one tip with y'all, right? It's different when you like the job that you go to. So that's pretty much gonna be a hint going forward for this whole video. But I'm gonna break it down, what type of trucking I'm doing, why I'm mad I didn't find about this, uh, why I'm mad I didn't find about find out about this type of trucking earlier. Um, and it saved me a lot of headache and everything. But as y'all see, I'm at the door. Um, I like to leave exactly at 7.15, no earlier, no later. So, you know, I'm about to bullshit around for like another mm, five minutes or so. And I'm hopping in the car. I'm gonna tap in. All right, y'all, first stop of the day. Um, I got like two trucks in front of me. I'm down here on Air Mingo. So, you know, this is not typical. Usually I'm in and out, especially at this stop. I usually just back up, give them the paperwork, they pull me off. But, um, you know, we got a little weight today. Ain't about nothing. I only got four stops, right? So this is what I mean by, you definitely gonna get your 40 hours. Um, overtime is available, but like right now I'm in Philly and I ended my over four stops. So I'll probably be done 9, 10, 11, around 12, right? To get my eight hours, I need to be on the clock till four. Anything after that, all right, now we talking money. Um, so I'll probably get done around 12 and I'm gonna take my break, half hour break. Now, if they give me some pickups, that'll probably drag me out to like two, right? Depending on where they give me the pickups at. Two pickups, three pickups, four, maybe five, I ain't no telling. But if I can knock them pickups out, stretch it to like two, 2.30, more than likely, no matter where I'm at, I'm gonna have an hour drive back to the uh, warehouse. So I'll probably pull in like four o'clock, 4.30ish. But see, this is how you kill them. When you on your way back, even though they already know I'm doing a swap, so they'll probably just tell me like, yo, I got you down for a swap anyway. But just in case, I shoot them a message like, yeah, I'm a, you mean, put me down for a swap. So if I get there at 4.30, um, by the time I get back to the yard, hook up, um, you know, hook up to an empty, I'm even going back to Ben Salem. If you're not from Philly, you probably won't know uh, the spots I'm talking about. But if you're from, you from Philly, we coming out of Jersey, so I'm even going to Ben Salem, um, I'm going down a little bit South Jersey. Um, they got a few. They got a few drop spots, mostly in Philly though. But they got like two or three in Jersey. I'm driving down there, I'm dropping it clean, um, picking up a. Uh, I said dropping off a clean, like I'm in tanker. I'm dropping off an empty, picking up a loaded, and then I'm coming back. So by the time all that's said and done, 4:30, fighting traffic and all that, I'm getting back between 5:30, 6 o'clock. That's a 10-hour day. You do that Monday through Friday. You mean you got 50 hours under your belt? So, I mean, 48 to 50 hours. So, it seemed like it's slow right now, but as the day progressed, you mean, they'll send me some pickups, I'll do a swap, and I'll get my hours. But, I mean, real laid back shit, man. Real laid back. I'll tell you one thing, you can see I got a day cab. It's so much easier parking these day cabs, bro, than a sleeper. Like, I'll be going to some tight spots, especially Norristown, Conchahokan, and shit like that. These spots be super tight. And when you got a day cab, when I tell you, you can put that thing on a 90 degree angle with no problem. You ain't gotta worry about uh, messing up your, I don't know what they call it, but like the side of your truck. Bro, it's so much easier. It makes stuff so easy. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep tapping up with y'all. I'm gonna bring y'all along with me. And y'all probably tap in when I get to my next stop. All right, so the time, 1051, right? Time, 1051, I of two stops, right? First stop in Philly. Then I had to come out here to Malvern. Now the kicker is my next stop is literally across the street. <laughs> They're literally across the street. Um, and then I end in Valley Forge at a service uh at a service station. Now originally that Valley Forge travel plaza that was supposed to be my second stop, but um it's all within a five mile radius. So I came here first, I'm gonna go across the street, I'm gonna hit that stop, and then I'm gonna hit the travel plaza last. Obviously, it's one pilot. I drop that, and I can take my break at the you know, travel plaza. Get some food, take back for like a half hour, um, and then start this pickup. So far, I only got one pickup. So, you know, time steady moving. Um, matter of fact, let me show you. All right, so we're gonna come here, right? Falcon Express. That was my first stop. They wanted me to go to Valley Forge and Wayne, PA. I skipped that, and I came to Turn Five first. 
Now you see that address is One Lee Boulevard. My next stop is gonna be Good Crop. That's Eight Lee Boulevard. So literally, that's literally that warehouse right behind the trees. That's where I'm going. So when it comes to like time management, it ain't too much you can do about that. Um, but you know, we're gonna make it do what it though. So I'm gonna tap back in with y'all. Uh, let me show y'all this pickup. This pickup so far, I've been here before, is King of Prussia. So it actually worked out that I came here first because I'm at the top, my run is at the top of my route. Um, either way, it could've worked. I could've worked my way up, hit that, and then came up here. But you know, I uh, came from Philly, came all the way up to the top, and now I'm working my way down. So after I leave Malvern, like I said, I'm going to Wayne, PA. From Wayne, PA, I'm gonna go right to King of Prussia. And then, you know, I'm working my way back up to a jersey at that point. So, anyway, I'm gonna tap in, see how long these guys take to unload me, because I do know they uh, unload for you. Um, most of these places unload for you, but you ain't even gotta get out the truck, you ain't even gotta go in. They'll just back up, call them, and when they done, they'll come sign your paperwork, so they ain't gotta do too much. So I'll probably tap in with y'all, talk to y'all a little more when I get there, so, yeah. All right, y'all, so that wasn't too bad. I guess the only thing I got left to do now is sit back and wait till they unload me. And you already know how that go. Once you hear your truck, once you feel your truck rocking back and forth, you know they, you know they unload, you got some action, so, you know. But it's funny, because one thing about this LTL life, right, you will be battle tested out here, right? When I say battle tested, bro, some areas you go to, it's like you driving in the city, these folks don't care about no truck. They not worried about none of that. And I used to think, I used to be ready to go to war. <laughs> I ain't gonna have you. LTL, I have you be ready to go to war sometimes. Like, I really used to think these people do shit on purpose. They'll cut you off, post your shit, or they'll see you trying to make a turn, and they'll park way above or way ahead of the white line, the white side of the line where you pulled the uh, park behind. And then I had to realize, man, these folks don't be knowing no better. They don't be paying attention. So a lot of the time, Jim, that's what it is. They don't be paying attention. It ain't personal. They just don't know what's going on. They probably in their phone. They trying to get to work. They got, I don't know. They just don't be paying attention. Um, so I like to learn to slow down, you know, take a deep breath, be patient. Cause you know, otherwise you're going to bang out, bro. I heard a lot of people on YouTube, they be like, uh, they scared to do LTL. That's too risky. Um, just putting your license on the line. And I feel like it's any, it's like any other job, whether you OTR, you on the highway, open road more, but eventually depending on what you're doing, like if you're doing driving, if you're doing reefer, eventually you're gonna have to come into the city no matter where. I don't care if you're going to Ohio, I don't care if you're going to wherever you're going. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of open road driving, but when you get closer to that destination, you gonna still have to go into these cities. Um, some people got tight streets backing in left, uh, what they call it, not uh, left blind, uh, blind side backs and all that. So, you know what I mean? If you could drive, I feel like you could drive. And if you take your time, you I mean you're gonna be cool out here. All right, tapping in, y'all, tapping in. Bro, the day pretty much done. <laughs> the day pretty much done, bro. Like, I knocked off all my stops. It is 12.07. Yo, I know my route to the T. But it's 12.07. I knocked out all my stops. I'm going to take my break for a half hour, but that'll take me to 12.30, and I'm going to start these pickups. Um, But pickups is cake. All you're doing is backing up, and they won't load you, and you pull out. So my day pretty much done. Um, I am curious to see how many pickups they give me and right now I still only got one but usually around like 132 230 you know how many pickups you're gonna have um if you're gonna get any more so um I think King of Pressure probably like roughly a half hour with traffic so if I come off at uh break at 12 30 um I'll probably make it to there about one o'clock probably take them 15 minutes to load me and then from there we're gonna see so yeah, man, like I said, LTO, bro, that's, that's just sweet, man. This shit really sweet. Um, I remember I heard a lot of people say from jobs, even when I was looking on YouTube, a lot of people say it ain't no money when you bumping docks. And for a long time, I thought the same thing, like driving. I just never, you know, it never seemed like it was money in it, for real, for real. Um, but, bro, LTO has been the best job I've had out of all three trucking jobs. So, you know what I mean? Hourly, uh, Monday through Friday benefits high hourly rate opportunity for overtime um you know i got all my holidays off it's not back breaking work like everything i ex everything i ex god for pretty much ex the universe for well my next trucking job i got it <laughs> i pretty much got it like i said in the beginning of the video um and one thing i did was 
when I went on Indeed, I pretty much just filtered everything. Like, when you first get into trucking, or you might do this now when you're looking for trucking jobs, you'll just go on Indeed and see what you like and just boom, 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 just click, fast apply. Or if it's talking something, you know, you'll fill out the app. But I recommend you go on Indeed when you're looking for a trucking job. And bro, matter of fact, before you even go on Indeed, get a notebook and write down everything you want out of your trucking job and what you don't want. So for me, on this side, my wants were just off the top of the brain, hourly pay. I wanted Monday through Friday, no overnight, so it had to be day work. Um, you know, overtime, benefits, stuff like that. Write everything down, even from the location, how far you willing to travel, nothing more than five miles, nothing more than 10 miles, 20 miles, however long. Write all that down on a piece of paper. And then you go on Indeed, and you filter it, bro. You can literally filter everything you want. You want local, click local. If you want, um, say you're looking for tanker, click tanker. Um, day work, just anything. Just filter that thing out. Um, hit your minimum. Like if you're not taking nothing under thirty dollars an hour, don't. You mean just filter that. And what that'll do is it kind of it does minimize your options, but at least you know every application you putting in. Somebody call you back. You know for a fact. You're not settling. You know for a fact this is what you want. You know what I mean? So that's my advice. Like I said, I ain't been posting. I didn't think I posted in like three months. Main reason being is, I don't know if y'all can see that right here. Yep. They, they got us too. <laughs> they got us, bro. I was watching some of the uh, Prime videos and, you know, people was talking about um, how they feel about the driver facing cameras. Um, I had to get used to it, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I had to get used to the driver facing cameras because on one hand like this right here vlogging i feel like you know anytime they want to they could probably just turn on the camera look at what i'm doing and they'll probably see me vlogging or if i'm having like a um you know a conversation with my folks or my doctor or whatever um you know, i feel like they could just ease in and listen to it i don't know that to be 100 percent sure um because the old camera this is the new camera the old camera it'll turn red and it'll let you know all right it's recording even though it's 24 hour uh recording streaming or whatever it only records and sends back to dispatch when that light turned green. So if you're drinking something to drink um, and it catch you, it'll turn red and all right, you know it's recorded for at least 12 seconds. Um, if you hard break, that light will come on, you know it's recording you. But now, you take a sip of water or something, the light don't turn, like you don't know when they record you. So I'm not a huge fan of it. Does it bother me now? No, I mean, as long as you leave your phone alone while you're not driving, while you driving, leave your phone alone. Um, it ain't illegal to drink water. It ain't gonna trip off you drinking water. So, you mean, just drive it like you got some sense. And, you know, you'll forget it's there eventually. But that's my main thing is like talking on the phone, conversations, you don't know what they can hear and all that other nonsense. Um, just, I don't know. That's how I feel about it. But yeah, I don't wanna make this video too long and drawn out. But yeah, I just wanted to tap in with y'all after three months. Let y'all know I'm good. Um. You know, I'm going to try to stop dropping more. I'm going to try to start dropping more consistently. Um, you know, now that I got my routine together. I kind of waited like a little while before I posted about this new job. Only because I see people on YouTube and they'll be like, all right, got a new job working at Pepsi, Cola, Walmart, whatever. And they giving a review of only one week of being there. If that, two weeks being there. And then the next time you see the video, it's like they quit. Or next month they quit. So it's like, you know, I ain't want to do that. So I said, let me get a solid three months in. That's part of the reason why it took so long. Um, but I said, let me get a solid, a solid three months in. This is my third month at the company. Um, and now I can honestly give an honest review, at least on LTO. What I say, 90, 30, 90? Well, it's my 90th day, my third, third month, right, 90 days. Uh, so I can actually give an honest review. And bro, if you're looking for something, you know, laid back that you can still make bread at, but you home every night, you can have a life, LTO, bro. LTL, where is that? If you ask me, LTL. And it's a lot of companies out there, Old Dominion, because we all deliver to the same spot, so I see these dudes every day. Only difference between my company is like, we're real small. We only got like 10 drivers. Whereas, uh, if I see like RNL carriers, I'm pretty sure they're like, a, I don't know if they consider that a mega company, but you know, they got a lot of trucks. Um, uh, what's another one? Central Transport, I see them all the time. Um, Old Dominion. What's another one? Um, Estes. What's another one? Um, it's a lot of them out here, man. It's a lot of them out here. Some paying more than others. Um, I think the highest I've heard so far was like $36 an hour with overtime, benefits and all that, Monday through Friday. So 
or that's where it's at. But I will say, you gotta have your hands, man, and tanker. That's the only reason why I say outside of bumping docks, you gotta have a hazmat and a tanker. So I feel like that's why the pay is so high when it comes to these type of LTL jobs, because you do need hazmat and tanker. Um, but outside of that, I don't know how much, I don't know how, outside of that, I'm not sure how the money would be if you just bumping docks local and you don't got no hazmat, no special certification. I doubt they would be trying to pay that much. But, you know, the fact that you got that hazmat, the fact that you got, oh, actually, you need hazmat doubles and triples. And you need um, a tanker. So, yeah, whatever. But I forgot I just throw that out there. Some information for y'all. And yeah, I guess I will tap in with y'all in the next video. Peace.